Piedmont Lichen here with Nicole and Krieg. Today we're in Petit Cuvée and we're walking in the 200 year old footsteps of Mary Somerville. If you don't know who Mary is, Krieg's going to tell you a little bit more about her later. As for now, let's see what we can find here. wee bits today at least so far I'm just saying I'm gonna come over and see if you found anything interesting yeah oh, found... okay these are cool yeah so like little sea urchins they're extremely fragile I've got a couple of, uh, of these at home that I found in Leaven before I've not really seen so many of these um, I think probably leave these here but they're really kind of pretty to look at uh, they always remind me of so, bone structures. Yeah, they look like little skulls, but they're, they're not. But yeah, they're, they're quite pretty. A tiny piece of pottery here with a brown glaze. I'm not seeing a great deal else, although there should be lots of bottles and such here. Brown on both sides, quite okay, nice. A very interesting piece of green glass here. I'm guessing that looks like a piece of bonfire glass. Uh, may not be, whatever it is, it's very thick, very chunky. I'm gonna take that with me, maybe find out what the hell could be. I've just handed Nicole a bunch of the stuff that I was picking up on the way along the beach yeah. and let's see what she makes of it. Yeah, well that's funny because I've also found a couple of these uh, huge chunky bits of what looks like bonfire glass. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, it's, it's really unusual to see them. And there Is was that right? a glass works, uh, like a bottle works factory in uh, Kinghorn just along the road. Oh, okay. uh, so these pieces might have come from there. It's really unusual because they almost look like gemstones in the way that they're like kind of cut in the appearance. So yeah, different. they look like uncut gemstones. Yeah. That's very cool. I've got a couple. Yeah. Now I've just spotted something. It could be amazing or it could be very, very new. Uh, looking at it. A little bit frosted this side, really, really shiny that side. I feel this might be a very new piece of glass. I'll show it to Nicole, see what she thinks. So I've just handed Nicole this piece that I really wasn't sure about, that really big piece of blue, but it was very shiny. Okay, so what do you think though? Do you think, you reckon that's old? I do think it's old, yeah. It's quite thick um, and it's flat, so it's probably from, well, like a kind of household bottle. Uh, it's really cool, uh, it really dwarfs my little tiny piece of light blue. Well, on, on the other hand, you know, you could wear that little Oops. piece. Oh, Nicole's just dropped something. So you've got a couple of things in your hand there. Yeah, I found this, which is like a, a kind of Scottish multi. It's almost like the sea ham multis with the multi, multiple colours. Oh, so. the really small yeah, piece. Yeah, I think yeah. we'll need to take a photograph yeah. of that so we can get a closer look. This looks like slag glass. Uh, so it's like a, a byproduct of the uh, kind of iron industry. And I found a couple of really big pieces of green bonfire that I have in my bag. Well, there's there's a lot of wave action here, and uh, there, you can see the water is coming in just now. Um, but there's not that many rocks here. That's probably why the glass isn't uh, as frosted as we would expect. What you're looking at over there is the view from uh, this side of the park before over towards the city of Edinburgh. Lots of really nice shells on this beach.
As a child growing up in nearby Burnt Island, Mary was fascinated by the natural world. She often wandered the coal-littered beaches off this coast, collecting shells and limestone fossils. Days spent lavishing her interest in the natural world meant that Mary could barely read or write by the time she had reached 9 or 10 years of age. To fix this, her father, Vice Admiral William Fairfax, sent her to a boarding school. Mary was expected to read, write and have a grasp of the fundaments of arithmetic. Otherwise, she should be adept at sewing, playing a musical instrument and perhaps dabbling painting. Despite the many barriers she faced, Mary Somerville would become the person for whom the word scientist was invented. Returning home at aged 11 after a year at the school, Mary became determined to educate herself beyond what was expected of a woman in her time. Mary developed a passion for algebra, which she studied by candlelight while the household around her slept. Mary had this to say of her self-education. I sat up very late reading Euclid. The servants, however, told my mother, whereupon an order was given to take away my candle as soon as I was in bed. I had, however, already gone through the first six books of Euclid, and now I was thrown on my memory, which I exercised by beginning at the first book and demonstrating in my mind a certain number of the problems every night till I could nearly go through the whole. My father came home for a short time, and somehow or other, finding out what I was about, said to my mother, Peg, we must put a stop to this or we shall have Mary in a straitjacket one of these days. This was not an uncommon fear at the time. Excitability, enthusiasm for masculine subjects of interest, even the desire to read, struck fear in the hearts of husbands and fathers who assumed that such unhealthy interests could only lead to exhaustion and finally madness. Sadly, many women suffered interventions to prevent this. They were sedated, locked in bland rooms, some were bound, many of the women subjected to such treatments tragically descended into poor mental states. Although generally discouraged, Mary had a few allies, such as her uncle who taught her Latin and the mathematician William Wallace in Edinburgh who encouraged her advances in mathematics. Mary's incredible ability to digest complex ideas and make them understandable was recognised and embraced following the publication of her translation of the French book The Celestial Mechanics. Her accomplishment won her an honorary membership of the Royal Astronomical Society and it changed the way her family and friends would see her forever. A few years after this, Mary authored her masterpiece on the connection of the physical sciences. It is an incredible book that showed a true mastery of the sciences. Despite all the odds against her, Mary had changed the way the world thought about science and the relationship between the sciences. In doing so, she had begun to push against the walls that barred science from women as a male-only institution. What word could describe such a person as Mary Somerville? When William Waywell wrote his anonymous review of Mary's work, he invented the word scientist to describe her. Mary was no man of science, as scientists had been known. In his admiration of her genius, Waywell invented the term scientist to refer to this remarkable woman whose expertise and knowledge spanned from the sands beneath her feet to the stars and the heavens above her. Also, it is. Yeah. Is there any markings on that one? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> it's really interesting because that mosaic that's up on the pavement, there's a uh -huh. few ginger beer bottle pieces in that. Oh, right. And yeah. you can see the, the words uh, ginger or something along, the, you're part of the word ginger, if not the whole word. Oh, right. So, there's, oh. I reckon they were found around here. Yeah, yeah, probably. And that's an old piece. We can tell it's an old piece because it has the internal screw marks. So this would have been a piece um, that would have had a vulcanite stopper in it. But a really nice wee uh, bit of clear glass there. And I guess, again, this is old, but um, it looks very fresh on one side. So this bait is looking after its glass. Yeah, yeah. and it's really yeah. interesting because you can see the internal uh, screw mechanism here. When you yeah. turn it around, you see the little lip there. Yeah, so. but that definitely had like a vulcanite or an internal screw stopper. Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. Yeah. But look, here, here's one here, it's got letters on it. 
Oh, okay, Can cool. Yeah, yeah. I think we might need to take that out to get okay. a closer look. I'll unearth it. <clears throat> okay, that's green glass and. Uh, what if does we it can say? come a wee bit closer, huh? Okay. It looks like it says D O M on it. Dom. Dom Dom. Is it the champagne? Dom Perium. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I doubt it. So. It's a bit thin for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. I just found a couple of nice pieces of glass, and I was walking over to where Nicole is, and then I found this. I reckon that's pirate sea glass again. Oh yeah. <laughs> really nice thick dark glass. Lovely. Look, I found a plastic bead. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. So yeah. it's not a glass bead, it's a plastic one, it's a modern day version. Yeah, it, it probably glows. It looks like it might be from, from some uh, from fishing rod uh, and then they All might right. glow and um, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, like beads that are on uh, fishing rods yeah. and uh, they glow under UV light so you can see them in the dark. <laughs> yeah, and of course fish can see in various different frequencies that we can't, yeah. so these things act as lures. Yeah, happy with the bead. Yeah. <laughs> nice chunky piece. I think I'll have to tell you a bit more about lavender and how it became lavender now. Yeah, that's a really nice piece. Sand used in glass making contains natural impurities like iron oxide and these impurities make bottles produced before the 1880s aqua or sea foam in colour. Pure clear or colourless glass wasn't invented until the mid 19th century when American glassmakers added manganese dioxide into the melt. They referred to manganese dioxide as glassmaker soap for this reason. An ironic quirk of manganese is that it reacts to the UV rays in sunlight. Long term exposure transforms the clear glass, turning it lavender or, in extreme cases, purple. A beautiful example of this quirk can be seen on Boston's Beacon Street, where older glass windows now display myriad tones of lavender, purple and everything in between. Ironically, thousands of years before manganese was used to clear glass, the Egyptians had been using it in order to produce ornamental purple glass. The use of manganese was discontinued around 1918 and cheaper alternatives were used to produce clear glass. In the world of sea glassing, this lavender colour is usually referred to as sun purple, though it is also called solarised glass or desert glass. And we recently heard through a comment on our Lighthouse Lacking video that amethyst glass is also used to describe these amazing pieces. There are a lot of people in the sea glass forums on Facebook and they are uh, currently doing experiments and they're leaving their white uh, sea glass out in the sun to bathe and see if it'll change. So that's something you could do at home. You could put some, uh, some sea glass, must be from before the 1930s, into the sun. Uh, it might take years to <laughs> so, so if you live in California, you're onto a winner <laughs> here. You might be able to get this to turn uh, lavender colour quite quickly. That's right, yeah. Maybe a little bit faster than we get here in Scotland. So yeah, in Scotland, maybe put aside a decade, <laughs> yeah. something like that. You might you might start to see a tint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's cool. It is really nice. Yeah. coming in and we're making our way back off the beach now. So just before I say cheerio then I just want to say thank you again to everyone who's subscribed to the channel, everyone who's commented, liked and a big special thanks to everybody who's helped us in coffee. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's us at Pedicure Bay. We're done here for today. I think we found some really interesting stuff. Some interesting pieces of glass. Those green pieces are a bit of a puzzle. So I don't know, we'll maybe find out what they are. Maybe we won't. Who knows? If you know what they are, tell us. But we'll be back next Friday then at 7 o'clock GMT time. We hope to see you then. Bye for now.